Hey everyone, Larry Sanswell here. It's not too early to start thinking about how you're going to feed the birds this winter. I know where my brother lives up in Illinois, they've already had some chilly nights. We've got a couple more months of warm weather here in Georgia, but today I'm going to make a suet feeder, mainly for woodpeckers, but you'll see nuthatches and a lot of other chickadees and other things using it. If you have a spare 2x6, this is really easy. I didn't have one, so yesterday I glued up some 1x6s. Sixteen inches long and a one by six is five and a three quarters. So let's get started. Don't need a lot of tools, but you're gonna need some. The first thing I'm gonna do is put this in my vise and just clean off some of this excess glue. sound. I want to be able to put two suet cakes in this feeder and so they're going to go just like that. The suet cakes come, at least in my area, they are four and a quarter by four and a quarter. All right I'm going to use my dollar store square here and I'm going to come down a full nine inches or so, nine and a quarter, not critical and draw a line across there. And then because I don't trust myself, I'm gonna go ahead and put these back on here to make sure they both fit in there. And they will. These packages are a little bit bigger. Then I'm gonna find the halfway point. And to do that, I'm gonna not use any math. Your board might be a little wider or a little narrower than five and a half or five and three quarters or just whatever it is. My board after cleaning is now at this, uh, we'll call it two and three quarters. It's a little bit over that, but I don't have enough markings on here. Two and three eighths. This is just barely big enough. And from that mark again, two and three eighths. And then I can go ahead and draw a line down there. Now I'm going to cut this off out with a jigsaw and it's got about a quarter inch blade in there, maybe a little longer than that. And it's really hard to turn these corners. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill a three eighths inch hole down here so that it bisects that corner. I can stand out those rough edges. To get rid of those holes I just made, I'm going to square this off and just cut it off straight there. Every time I put my earmuffs on, it calls Siri and my hearing aids to turn the camera off. This part isn't necessary, but I, I'm just going to make this look a little bit better by rounding off these corners a little bit. Now 
Now, if you have extra one, one by material, you don't need to use this. This is really overkill. But if you're using the two by six, then this will be what you have. And I know you can buy suet feeders. But that's not what I do. You don't want to see a video of me going to buy a suet feeder. Now this is a little bit bulky, so I'm going to, again, doesn't need to be this big, but the larger like red belly woodpeckers and some of the sap suckers need this to brace their tail against. So I'm gonna find that center line again. I'll use this corner this time. And an inch and a half, two inches. Let's go three inches up. Now to make sure you're square, getting a nice square cut, the best way to do this is to draw a line straight across and then aim for both of those lines, the line on the side here and the line on the top until you get it all the way across the top. And then don't fight the saw, let the saw do the work and just let the work Now a couple strokes with the hand plane and you've got a beautiful edge here. This part isn't really necessary, but since I have the handsaw out, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And on each side here, since this is a double-sided suet feeder, I'm just going to put a, they're about three quarters to a half an inch apart. Don't need many. And I'm just going to score those lines. Again, start and work your way across. These lines don't have to be deep. Gonna make them about the depth of the teeth. I'll repeat that on the other side. Looks like that. We have one bit of woodworking left. And that's to cut some holes for this and this and I'm going to center it up here best I can that looks pretty good and I'm going to put a hole on each side of this I want the hole to be outside the perimeter that's not critical you actually want it to be kind of right on it so I'm going to put a little hole here with my awl where I want that drill to start. So that's the end of the woodworking part. We're going to need a coat hanger and that's going to need to be straightened out. So I'll use my Lyman's pliers here. Cut that, and then straighten it out. You probably should have safety glasses on here because this wire gets a little wild. I know I said I was done with the woodworking part, but there's one more hole I want to drill. And since this is two pieces of wood here, it's really easy to figure this out. I'm going to come down here two inches on each side and drill a hole just big enough for that coat hanger. The 
So once you have your coat hanger straightened out, you're going to put it through the two holes here on the top. Then I want to make a right angle turn to the inside. I'm going to try to get them even. It's not critical. You can make some adjustments. So now I can slip those sides in, those two holes. And then I want to try to bend them back over. And to do that, I'm going to get a little help with my hammer here. And now the woodworking is done. Now we're going to need some hardware cloth, and you can either use quarter inch hardware cloth, or in my case I've got half inch here, and I've measured over, so I need to snip it off right here. This is my least favorite part of this project. Now I want to try to make this as flat as I can. Now that you've got it cut to width, you need to cut it to length. And I suppose if you wanted to, you could leave this side long and instead of cutting these notches in here for them to hold on to, just go ahead and staple that. But I know that's going to be a lot easier for the starlings and the squirrels to hold on to this than it is those notches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut mine off. But you are certainly welcome to do what you think is best. I can, with my side cutters here, can get much closer and it's a lot easier to do this singly. Now once you have this cut, you're going to need some fashion way to fashion this to the wood. And I'm going to use a stapler with three eighths inch staples. Uh, I have these uh, chicken wire staples too, but um, there's not a lot of room to work here. So I'm going to put one side on here. Now I don't have the greatest hand strength anymore. So once I get it started here, I'll be using two hands. <laughs> Well, there it is. Yeah, it took about an hour and a half in real time. I'm not counting the glue. Let's go hang it up.